What's up, everybody? My name is Jason, and welcome to the SBA Loses Lawsuit and your EIDL Loan Report. I'm at my favorite ballpark just outside of Atlanta. It's called Wills Park. Gorgeous. Sunny, about 90 degrees today. Nobody's here, so I thought I'd take advantage of this moment to give you guys an update on my reconsideration. I heard the craziest thing from my loan officer who actually declined me the other day. It just gets more bizarre by the day. What was the latest EIDL loan report with respect to the $10,000 uh, EIDL targeted advance? And did they quadruple the number of $5,000 supplementals and why? And then I want to close out this video, at least for some of you that are going to stick around, as to why I think the SBA losing its first lawsuit in many years is a watershed moment. And what I want you guys to be thinking about as we progress into June when we launch trysmallbiz.com. All right, for starters, man, it's beautiful out today. Just absolutely gorgeous. I hope you guys are doing well. So last night, five o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, the loan officer who declined me two weeks ago for 24 months of working capital reached out to me. He said, hey, Jason, I need you to send me your driver's license, avoided check, your 2019 taxes and your 2202, which is your liabilities. And because I work from home, I have next to no cost of services. So I put down a couple of credit cards. He told me I don't have to put down my mortgage, just expenses that are directly related to the business. So I asked him, I said, this is a first for me. Anytime I've helped do reconsiderations, and it's been hundreds of them, you deal with a new loan officer in PDC recons at SBA.gov. He said, yeah, it's a little bizarre. I'm not sure why, but they pinged me, the recon department, and said, tell Jason to send us those four items. Well, I had already sent them 10 days ago now. So tune in for the conclusion to that rather surreal moment. If anyone has ever had a reconsideration and been pushed back to the loan officer that originally declined you, let me know in the comments because that's a first for me and I've been doing this for over a year now. All right, with respect to the new targeted idle loan report, which now has the $10,000 targeted idle advance, as well as the $5,000 supplemental, two straight weeks in a row, they're slowing down on the 10K. They came in just over 109,000. That was up about 6,000. They had been running a four month average of around 7,000 a week. So the prior week, it was only 4,500. This week, it was around 6,000. Those are both below the $7,000 a week rolling average. And don't forget, June the 1st is four months. It's taken them four months, ladies and gentlemen, to get through 109,000 people. So it's gonna be another four months at the rate they're going to get to a quarter million total. And the fake numbers that they gave Patrick Terpstra, which did, who did a tremendous interview for Newsy, it's on my Twitter wall, watch it if you haven't seen it. They tried to tell him that only 1.1 million of the 9 million who applied for the idle advance last year, don't forget 5.7 million got funded. They're trying to say only 1 million of us, 1.1 million to be exact, applied for the targeted idle advance. Everybody knows that's bullshit. But they admitted to declining over 600,000 of you. So they're giving us fake numbers, admitting they declined almost two thirds. And at the rate they're going at 109,000 through almost four months, June 1st, we are literally talking about the fall just to get to a quarter million of their fake number of 1.1 million people. So when I tell you guys at the rate they're going, it's gonna take three years, that's no joke. Now, can they suddenly outsource more of the responsibility? Can they speed it the hell up? Can they pass Jackie Rosen, John Cornyn, and Chuck Schumer? S513, that would eliminate the log jam caused by scanning for economic loss in low-income community. They'd literally be able to wire the balance of 10 grand to the 5.7 million that got 1,000 per employee last year. And anyone who applied between July when they ran out and December 27, they may ask for a voided check and or a driver's license, but they could pay everybody within two or three weeks tops. At the rate they're going, especially now that this lawsuit just went against them, more on that in a second, we're talking about years. 
to get through, I don't know, half a million people? That's over 12 months at the rate they're going of around six or 7,000 a week. So I wish I had better news. Now, some of you got a little excited when you saw 49,000 or four times the amount of $5,000 supplementals were approved versus last week. The only reason that is, is they're scanning from your $10,000 targeted idle advance application. So in the next week, week or two, mark my words, the supplemental is gonna catch up to the $10,000 targeted, minus probably 30%, because not everyone suffered a 50% economic loss, which is required for the extra 5K. There's a lot of people that suffered between 30 and a 49% loss, so they'll only get the 10 grand. So we're gonna be at around 115 next week after four months for the 10K. I'll bet you that the 49,000 jumps to somewhere around 65 or 70, and then there's gonna be that gap that's gonna be maintained. They're both gonna run into a brick wall and it's gonna take forever for them to get to a million, their target for the $5,000 supplemental. So look, I wish I had better news on that front, God bless and congrats to everyone. There's been thousands of people on our channel that have gotten funded, but the vast majority of folks, over 90%, have not gotten a dime for many, many months. And unless they change the system or pass S513, it's literally gonna be years to get everyone who's entitled the money that they deserve. All right, with the remaining time I have, this is a, a tricky subject and some of you, if you're a racist, sexist, homophobic type of person, you might wanna check out because I can promise you this, if you leave me with some ridiculous comments like some of you did yesterday and the day before, it'll be the last time we speak. But ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe the loss of the SBA's lawsuit, and there's a 17 page report, I think it's 18 pages actually, I'll pin it in the top and it basically, the conclusion from the judge, who's well-respected on both sides of the aisle, believe it or not, in Texas, is that you can't single out any specific group, whether it's white men in this case, blacks, Hispanics, gay and lesbian community, no matter what it is, because the white guys in this case were told, you gotta stand at the back of the line while they service Hispanics, women, and veterans. And that's what Jackie Rosen's bill, which I think is in big trouble now, because there's gonna be copycat lawsuits. The same group, which is run by Stephen Miller, I know, plug your ears, all you partisan hacks. He was a part of the Trump administration. And he's a very smart, powerful dude who's drawn in big money in support of white men in particular that are being discriminated against, not just by the SBA, but by Washington, D.C. And what he calls government-sponsored class warfare. Before I go any further, it's important that I give all of you a little bit of background because we're gonna get to know each other a lot more in the coming months when we launch this site. And I can promise I will not be promoting and supporting racist, homophobic, uh, sexist type people that have a problem with this one love concept that I keep talking about since day one. I grew up in a small town of upstate New York called Antwerp, and I was literally five miles or less from Fort Drum, the 10th Mountain Division of the United States Army. Thank you very much to all those who currently have served, disabled, retired. We love and we appreciate you. And when I was a kid, two feet high, I'm the oldest of five, three younger brothers and a sister who lives not too far from me here in Atlanta, I couldn't go to sleep until the war games began in the summer. And I can remember laying in bed at night with my mom and I'd be like, when are they gonna start dropping bombs? Oh, probably midnight, one o'clock. So I would literally lay in bed as a four, five, six, seven year old kid until the windows were rattling and the house was shaking. I mean, it was literally, I couldn't go to sleep. That is an honest to God, true story. And then when I got older, around 10, 11, 12 into my teen years, my younger brothers and I used to stop uh, the trucks and rob them of their sea rations. And then I also worked on the base at Fort Drum in the post office through my teen years. And I would go to the gym most of the time with my dad at night and play basketball. Well, my opponents were mostly brown and black kids. 
and those who are serving in the military. And then I went on to play college sports, namely football. We had black and brown guys on my team. My grandfather, youngest of 10, was raised on a farm in Missouri. Both of his parents died when he was only four years old. And he was raised by an all black family just up the road. And when I grew up in upstate New York, there were as many brown and black photos on the wall from, I can still see her face. She was a heavy set black woman who just had all the love and light you could ever possibly imagine. And there's my grandfather barely coming up to her waist as a tiny little kid. And it was from day one, I was taught to respect everyone. And then I spent a lot of time in South Florida where there's a lot of Hispanic, gay and lesbian community. And I loved every minute of it, folks. I am of the opinion that variety is the spice of life. This is not a pander. This is not a, oh, aren't I so cool? I want you guys to know who you're getting in bed with in the next 30 days. Everyone is going to be welcome at trysmallbiz.com, which will turn into a mobile app shortly thereafter. I'm talking about black, brown, white, gay, straight, Jew, Arab. Yeah, I said it, both of them, Jew, Arab, Asian, there shall be no hate, no hate whatsoever. I'm including everyone that you could possibly think of. As long as you bring your A game to the party, we're never going to have a problem. But even if you're a white guy like me and you act like an ass, you'll be treated like an ass and you'll be thrown out the door. We cannot, ladies and gentlemen, get beyond the scourge of racism, sexism, or homophobia, which in many cases has plagued this nation and our world for the last two, three, four hundred, might as well say a thousand years, unless enough of us drive a stake in the ground and say, that's it. We're not going to constantly look in the rearview mirror. We're not going to point fingers at someone else who looks different, walks different, votes different, sleeps different than we do. We have to have more people of all colors, all races, all creeds that say enough. We're gonna get along. We're gonna forgive, we're gonna respect the past, no doubt about it, but we are from here on out equal. We're gonna put all our money in the center of the table and we're gonna divide it evenly. And when I start promoting you guys in the next few weeks, throughout the next 20 or 30 years, you'll notice everyone gets some love from every walk of life. And I'll be as fair and loving and supportive as anybody out there until you prove that I need to be otherwise. And I will take out the trash. I have owned social networks and forums in the past. I have no tolerance whatsoever for hate or bigotry or any of the other things that have been dividing us for the last several hundred years. We live in a matrix that's all about division. The reason the SBA is gonna lose a lawsuit, whether it's against white guys, gay guys, brown guys, or whatever, is we are taught and we are conditioned by the media and social media and the fake news and the puppet masters behind the string to cancel and not tolerate anyone who looks different, thinks different, walks different, talks different than I do. So look, I can feel most of you are going, okay, okay. We heard enough. We understand you're a good fucking guy. It's just important that everybody know I ain't having it. I'm not doing cartwheels that the SBA lost a lawsuit. I am simply saying that discrimination of any group, which includes white guys like myself, is wrong. It's unacceptable. And it's not going to be the first time the SBA and or the federal government lose in the court of law. We have to get to a place as a community, and it starts right here, right now, where we're willing to open our hearts and minds to everyone. There's a mess of all messes in the Middle East right now with the Jews and the Arabs. It has to end with us. If enough people stop being anti-Semitic or anti-Arab or anti-anything, and we realize that the good Lord brought us here for a reason, and it's not to kill, maim, and cancel one another. It's to get along, it's to coexist, it's to love and support and to make money, and in our case, have fun for the next 20, 30, 40 years and beyond. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate everybody who stuck with me to the end. I hope it made a little bit of sense for you. 
Always remember, I love each and every single one of you. And thank you so much for watching.